Okay, so that, that was the first instrumental part of Buddy Guy's Black Cat Blues. And if you listen to the words to that, you know he's referring to uh, Howlin' Wolf's I Ain't Superstitious, But a Black Cat Crossed My Trail. Um, and if you don't know that song, you should listen to that. But uh, now, I didn't even tune my guitar because I, you know, I, I want to be kind of like Buddy Guy and be slightly out of tune. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm out of tune or not, but, uh, but anyway, the, uh, uh, I played it kind of slowly. He's playing it faster. I just learned it last night. Really, I just transcribed it on this page in pencil. And, um, and then I, I always do things in pencil so I can erase them if there's a mistake. And then I photocopy it dark so it brings out the pencil uh, a lot darker. And um, so I've got one page of that first verse. And um, it's got some tricky things in it, but, and it's kind of funny, he never really, it's in the key of A, but he never strums an A chord but he plays around the chord tones and he does strum the E seventh, which is the five chord, you know. And then he does a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. Like that. And then at the end, um, at the end, uh, he kind of hits an A, an octave but he never really strums an A chord. Um, so anyway, you're doing, um, usually a lot of this kind of blues would be done in the key of E, like. But, and that's probably fits on the guitar a little better, but I assume Buddy Guy wanted to sing this in A, and so and he didn't really worry about it. He's Buddy Guy, you know, he, he can play anything. But anyway, uh, you're doing grace note slides. So I'm going to go over it slowly, measure by measure, or section by section. The first measure. And push that a little bit, you know, to get a little bit of a bend. It's a little tease. It's a blue note. The second measure is the same as the first, except at the end of the measure, you're going to do a little hammer going into the third measure. So it goes second measure, third measure, same thing on all four beats, and then again in the fourth measure, and then four, three, three, one, two, one. This is the trickiest part of the whole page. You do three and then slide first finger to three. Same note, but you're doing third finger, first finger sliding immediately to it. And then you're going to slide your third finger from fret five to seven to go into the fifth measure. So again, I'll, I'll play that fourth measure. Starts real easy, it's that same lick. And that's the downbeat of the fifth measure. I'll do it again. Then this measure. Okay, now a lot of this style that Buddy is doing is really right from Jimmy Rogers. And um, I'm not talking about the white Jimmy Rogers who is sort of the uh, king of country music, uh, the yodeler Jimmy Rogers. No, this is Jimmy Rogers who was a black blues artist in Chicago that played with Muddy Waters. And then he had his own career. He was a great blues songwriter. Jimmy Rogers wrote some of the best blues songs uh, 
you know, of any of the Chicago players except for maybe Little Walter, who wrote great songs too. Uh, really, they're both excellent. And both of them were sidemen to Muddy Waters, and then they had their own career. Uh, but this is right from Jimmy Rogers, you know, where he's going like... Okay? And you probably don't have to play it exactly like Buddy Guy, and he, he would probably do it differently every time, you know, a little bit. So, but anyway, what you're doing is a shuffle beat, and then triplets... I'm sorry. But it's mainly first and third fingers on the seventh, and that's a part of a D chord. Like if you put your second finger there and strummed uh, the first four strings, and then the pinky makes it a D seventh. So you're kind of like, doing a little, you, it almost sounds like a scale, but it isn't. It, he's just playing around the chord tones. And that was the thing about Jimmy Rogers' style, is that you never heard him really play a pentatonic scale. He would play around the chord tones, mostly. And, but other guitarists who imitated him would play that chord tone style and then also mix pentatonic licks. And that's what Buddy Guy's doing a little bit. But uh, so anyway, so he's coming off of, I'm going to play measure four again, going into measure five. So. sliding way down from seven to three. It's just a grace note, which means it's like snapping your fingers. And then, I'm sorry, I got lost here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, okay. So, and, and then he goes into uh, measure seven, And he's hitting the open G, but not very loud. I'm probably hitting it too loud. And then a kind of a John Lee Hooker kind of, you know, trill. Okay? So, um, again, I'm going to play measure six going into measure seven. So we got... Then he repeats on measure eight. And then he goes in to an E chord. He hammers O, one, two. O, one, frets O, one, two on the fourth string. Hits the low E. And that's the five chord. And then he fingers, now he's keeping the second finger there, and he's adding the first and fourth finger. And this is a chord that, in blues, you probably wouldn't do like an E chord like you would, you know, the cowboy chords, the regular Mel Bay E chord that you learn in the chord encyclopedias, like that. But it's a two finger E, and the second finger is on the fourth string, and it's muting the fifth string. So the fifth string is dead and then the sixth string is ringing, and you have a two-finger E chord, but when we add the pinky, it makes it a seventh chord, and the pinky is on the third fret of the second string. So you could strum all six strings, and you're not going to hear the fifth string. You want to make sure you're always touching it, and that's where a lot of students, you know, they'll, they, they're not aware of whether they're touching it. And, and often it'll ring open and it doesn't sound good. Like, you know, that doesn't sound good, right? That's a wrong note. So you want to mute that. And you might think, well, why don't I just finger it like the Mel Bay? But blues guys wouldn't do that, okay? So don't do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can, but, you know, I mean, but uh, I would just do this, this, 
it's really easier. Once you learn to mute that fifth string, it's easy to grab this chord. And a lot of the licks, you end up with that second finger there, and if you need to hit a chord, you don't want to have to change to third finger there. So it's, it doesn't make sense to do third finger on that. So anyway, so um, he's going into the E chord. I'll play measure eight again. It's like... Now, when he does that E chord, he hits a down stroke on the low E, and then an up stroke on the open first string, and then on the two notes, the second and third string chord, he's doing a down stroke and then an up stroke, down, up, down, like this, like, sorry, do it again. And then he's going into that D chord with an F sharp in the bass. And it's a lot like a B7 if you put the second finger on the sixth string. But it's not a B7, it's a D7. And then he's hitting, uh, well, I gotta look at it here. So he's hitting different notes of that chord, and it's in the tablature. It's sixth string, third string, third and second, fourth, second string, third string third and second, and then I think he kind of slides off that. I don't think he uh, pulls off. He might. There's one place, I can't remember, I'll have to listen to it, but I'm just going to slide off and then kind of pull that third fret. So that whole measure going into the D. And then he, he hits the downbeat of the second to the last measure, and it's three counts. One, two, three, two, two, three. Trill. And then that slide off. Again, kind of sliding. It's not a pull off, but a slide off. And he just taps these notes. You almost hear a little pull off, but it's, you're mainly tapping the note in a rhythm. So it's like, um, I'll do the last two measures of this intro. So it's like, one, two. On the end, you might do an upstroke on the second fret A, and then a downstroke on the downbeat A open. So it kind of goes like, and that would start where you start singing. So I'll, I'll do that again. I kind of messed that up. So <laughs> one, two, three, two. Okay, and think about, you know, Buddy was just probably just making it up, you know, I mean, he, he didn't have it written out like I do, <laughs> but he, it was uh, just made up in his head, you know, but um, have fun with that, that's uh, the beginning intro of Buddy Guy's Black Cat Blues, uh, cool song, you know, Buddy Guy's a cool guy, you know, he's one of a kind, you know. Uh, you know, I, I read interviews of him in Guitar Player Magazine long before I ever heard him play a note because you couldn't find his records, you know, back then. I was about 15 or 16 and I was reading Guitar Player Magazine. He was talking about tapping the strings with a drumstick, you know, that that was a cool thing that he did. And then later I, I was in a band that opened up for him 
and um, in a club called The Bottom Line here in Lexington, Kentucky. And um, uh, he, he did that drumstick thing, and it was like, he was smiling, he was doing the Hendrix riff, like... <laughs> tapping it with a drumstick. And it was like I was looking at the devil. You know, it was like he was possessed by the devil. And he could have only learned that from the devil, right? <laughs> but I think he worked on it for years, back in the 60s, you know. And I, I didn't really hear him until... This was in the 80s when my band opened up for him, but uh, he was brilliant. So have fun with this, all right? All right, great.